Okay guys, this is Sonora High School. This is the tunnel I was telling you about in the last video. And since it's gonna be in the dark anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and film it at night. Somebody has cut a hole here. We used to climb it way down the other end and ride our skateboards, but this is a shortcut. So let me try to get down here. Okay, going in the underground in the daytime is freaky enough, but at night it adds to it. I'm gonna use the Thunite TH30. Let me check. Yes, the Thunite TH30 and the WowTech A5. I'm totally like freaking out. <laughs> that way goes way down by where Tariga used to be, Tariga School. If you were a kid of the 70s, early 80s, you'll remember that one. This one goes to Valencia. You'd have to be the kid of the 30s, I mean the 30s, the 70s. They may be locked in the parking lot. But if they do, I can drive right over the, uh, get off the curb. No big deal. If I remember right, this is at least a 40 minute round trip. Whoa. Wildlife action. Look at those suckers. One, two, three, four of them. We used to come down here as kids, we'd light everything to it so we could look back. But back then we just had those little one double A ever ready flashlights like you'd put in your pumpkin when you're trick or treating. We didn't have the uh, high tech lights of today. I'm still getting signal. Turn it back on if there's any change in the scenery. This one goes up over there and comes up by In N Out Burger on Lambert and uh, Palm. It comes out across the street from Lambert by the railroad tracks. There will be another one up here on the left, up high that will come out right in front of Sonora. One like this. Matter of fact, that's it. See, you didn't used to have that little grate there. You can climb up and get inside that thing and look out and you're looking at the curb um, Snorri you lift up the manhole right straight up and I'll show you where it is when I get out and get back to my car this was the adventure we had as kids with our bow and arrows, just those fiberglass bow and arrows, you know. They're about 30, 35 pound draw. Look at these roaches. About 30, 35 pound draw. The tips are like a bullet. 
We used to tie a little piece of rag on the tip of the arrow and put lighter fluid all over it and have a lighter ready in case we heard a noise up ahead. We'd light that rag and shoot it. Theoretically, it would scare whatever it was off. But that's the mind of kids from the 70s. We also had slingshots, pellet guns, a pellet gun with 10 pumps and a pellet, and then three to five BBs dropped down the barrel. You had to keep the barrel pointed up, but if something made noise down there, you just point it and fire, it'd be like a shotgun blast. Slingshots, clubs, torches, I don't remember where this one comes out. Oh, yes, I do. By the, uh, where the Daily Star Progress used to be. Right now, we are going underneath Palm Street. It's directly above us. Can you imagine being down here when the big one hits? Some bitch. <laughs> and this one, we figured popped up right in the middle of the street, so we never dare open it up. It's like totally creeping me out. For sure, totally. Roaches. Listen to this. <laughs> They used to freak us out. Well, you get the idea. Look at This just goes on for a few more miles. About another mile, mile and a half. And then it, it goes up to a really steep grade full of some slimage. And you can't get up that slime uh, without a lot of the struggle creeping me out um, and when you do get up it goes about five six more feet maybe four feet and then it uh, just comes to a, some bars like these steps a grill you can't get through we never made it past that way so you've seen this one almost to the end. But it goes, this one goes all the way down. If you know the area. This one, look at those stinking roaches. Yeah. This one goes all the way down to uh, about where my friend Willie spent his last breaths. Um... That guy, um, he, uh, he had a lot of problems with life and with his back. If you watched my other video about the trains, you'll know it. If not, you can watch it. I'll put a link in the details. And I keep hearing noises. <laughs> it's, it's like it. It's like I'm 13. It's like I'm 8 years old again. It's like I'm eight years old again. I'm hearing those noises. This place will creep you out. Look, I'm down here at night by myself. Night, night, night. That snores bell. 
Now, uh, I learned a lot from that guy. Even though he didn't know he was teaching me and I didn't know it at the time. When certain people say certain things, it, it sets off alarms in my head and makes me ask them questions to see if they're serious. I don't want to get into that. But he'll be with me for life. I don't know, besides his family, I don't know anybody else that'll say that, but that guy will be with me for life. He'll, he lives inside my head. That's where a lot of my friends live now. A lot of my friends live only inside my head. But inside my head is where all the cool stuff from back then is, so I think they're doing all right in there. There's a lot of bluegill in there. <laughs> There's a lot of cool things going on in there, around the clock, whether I'm involved in it or not. Okay, so the other side of this, the other side of this coin, um, it'll pop up again in back of Dickinson's lumber where that is across the street from Unicorn Metals the one on Lambert it'll pop up there for a while and stay open until it gets down to about oh just past Euclid, in between Euclid and Walnut. Then it goes underground again, and then it will pop up again over and back of Regal Cinema. And there's one that runs along Harbor, from the Harbor and Harbor on the, across from Taco Bell on the east side of Harbor. Now it's underground, it used to be open and it goes down towards the fire station, southbound, makes a sharp right, goes under, right by the railroad tracks, and that one will go down and run parallel for a while, and then it'll go two ways, north and south. You take the south, you'll hit this one further down. A lot of them connect. But when it opens up again down there by Regal Cinema, there used to be ducks that would be there because they'd come from Laguna and the other areas, and there used to be minnows in there, polywogs, so that they'd land, they'd kick back, you know, it was a rest stop. Let's see if I can do this with my hand. No, I can't. I can put the camera away. So that'll give you a taste. A taste of the underground cities of Orange County. I'm gonna take you over and show you some cool things, little known history of this area but you can verify it on the internet. Some unbelievable stuff. Totally freaking out. It sounds like there's somebody down there. Do you hear that? I just got out in time. I think. Okay, keep an open eye, you'll see where it popped out. Right there, right there on the curb. Right there on the curb. That's where it pops out. And that other manhole is right there. Now, believe it or not, this is the way we were headed. It makes a sharp turn, and this is the direction we were going. We had compasses with us back then. So we knew which way the streets ran, and we could tell where about where we were, which direction we wanted to go. Now, it, it starts heading this way. You can get out of this one. You can look through that one. And then it comes down this way, parallels Central or La Harbor Boulevard or State College. They're all the same street. 
right here it breaks out let me show you it breaks out right there It breaks out right here. This is where you come. You come along here. And just a short ways up there, there's a place where it climbs real steep. It climbs really steep. And you can't get up that moss. If you could, and you can get past, theoretically, there used to be a ditch over there. Let me shut this off. Oh, the cops coming over here. Okay, there used to be a ditch. Right over there, where that fence is. And that ditch was all underground. Hell, it goes up that way about three blocks. It goes towards Nike base. And then it would go underground again and disappear. That thing was filled with these little frogs. As big as quarters, or the biggest you could get them. Most of them are like dimes. You can catch them by the hundreds. And that's where that goes. That's where it originates. That comes down from a spring up there on the hill. A spring that doesn't run year long, but it came down, ran through a trickle. You could catch frogs in there, and then uh, it'd run into there, and it would carry it all the way down to where the creek goes underneath Beach Boulevard, just short of Imperial, on the north side of Imperial. It's so interesting to to learn these things as a kid, firsthand, not be told them, but to learn them. We were mapping stuff out back then. It was just wonderful. Oh, 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 and this. All of this, none of this existed. This right here used to be a principal's office. Those of you old enough to remember Valencia School in Brea. This was Valencia School. The office was here. I can still see it. The office was here, still here. The kindergarten was in the back. The library was in the back. The playground fenced off for the kindergartners. The aisle went right down the middle, dividing the two places. Miss Nobby's third grade was on that side. Miss Nobby looked just like Elizabeth Montgomery and Bewitched, but with a big beehive hairdo. She was really pretty for us back then. That was the end look. And um, there was a bar in the back with these rings in a circle. A bar that went up with a ring around it, and you could go around these rings. It was so fun. With the biggest feel of any school ever seen. My mom used to park right here at lunchtime. And me and my brother would come running out. He was in kindergarten, I was in third. And we'd come running out and jump in her car. She's an old Chevy too. And we'd jump in that car. She'd bring us Darwina Schnitzel. And we'd have Darwina Schnitzel. And I wrote Darwina Schnitzel about that memory. And for years, on my birthday, they would send me a coupon good for a meal of my choice. Um, I wrote them a letter and sent it in the mail, not not uh, email. And for years they would send me happy birthday for um, bringing them back a, a good memory. Uh, but I guess the guy that did it retired or something because it, it stopped about 10 years ago. And our principal at this school had a gold Corvette. And that gold Corvette uh, was with a luggage rack on the back. I can't remember, it was like it was yesterday. And this principal was scary. He was cool once you got to know him. But he was scary when they said they were sending you to the principal because he was Mr. Perkins and he had a hook hand and that hook opened up like, like that. And he'd grab your shirt like that. Oh, it'd scare the heck out of a kid. But he was a cool guy. And for you who grew up in the area, OSD Park and this would be the Deer Palma School. If you watch my videos you may have saw me shoot a uh, Sasquatch video here <laughs> riding my skateboard. The cops come down. Somebody call the cops. I'm in the run. What the hell are you doing? <laughs> Making a Sasquatch video. He goes, I gotta admit it's pretty cool. Go ahead and finish it up over here and then leave. That way uh, we don't have to cite you or anything. So he watched me shoot the Sasquatch video. 
And we park here. Something cool I want to show you. This was a big thing growing up here. Local baseball field, football field up there. Uh, the deer palm over there. One kindergarten, I think. I remember it. It's amazing what I remember. We all wrote our name on a tag and a phone number to the school and tied it to a balloon. We all let the balloons go. About, I don't know, back then probably 100 and something kids, maybe 200 kids. All let their, look at this, a squirrel. All let the balloons go. It's a nice one. So, who, uh, with that and instructions to please call the number. Whoever balloon went the furthest and got the call back to the school, thinking about it now, the parents probably just cheated so they did it or had a, had a relative do it. I don't know, it could have been honest, but somebody's went to Florida, supposedly, and they called and they won and they got two tickets not to paradise, but two tickets to Disneyland. That's when you got the book with A, B, C, D, and E tickets. And they won a trip to Disneyland, which was pretty cool for letting a balloon go. This is the, back then, world famous bamboo forest. Used to be a huge bamboo forest back here where you could come get your bamboo for all your needs, whether it be arrow shafts, spears, fishing poles, javelins. Um, David Carradine Kung Fu was popular back then, so fighting staffs, nunchucks, whatever your bamboo needs were. But the bamboo needs became too much. Oh, I thought somebody was right there. The bamboo needs became too much, and uh, it's a cool bike track back here, but. But uh, there's absolutely zero bamboo left, none. There's a few stalks up there, but if you grew up in this area, you know what it was like right here. You couldn't see that, you couldn't see that. They didn't exist, those were avocado groves. But you couldn't see over there. This was just one thick forest. You expect to see some koala bears and pandas. The creek still runs through here, believe it or not. And by the way, this also used to be, and still is, a way to get through a tunnel and to get into a nursery and through a nursery that originates in the back. Picture a nursery back there to a Stelly Park, and then there's a driveway that I showed you coming in. You can go up. The guys in the nursery don't mind if you walk directly through, you don't touch anything, but you can get to Nike Base from there. That used to be the way we did it in school, but now you can drive up there on Harbor Boulevard. Bamboo forest uh, creek still runs. You don't hear any frogs anymore. These were the places we used to play. Looking for tadpoles. Used to be crawdads even in here. <laughs> you can still get in, just like always. I just see mosquito larvae now. This tree is falling over. I'm just going around showing some of the people that used to live in this area. Some of the highlights from our childhood. So Bamboo Forest lives no more. I have a friend named Wendy. Anybody that went to Sonora, 
will know this girl. If you graduated in the 80s, early 80s, Wendy Jarnatowski, she hung out with uh, Deanna Williams. Uh, oh. Uh, I think she was German, I believe was her last name. And a bunch of the other local hotties that lived in the track at the end of Palm. A lot of hotties lived in that track. That was Hottieville. <laughs> but uh, yeah, she was gonna do this with me. Um, go in this little memory lane stroll. But she works nights. She's worked at Albertsons, I believe it is, since high school. She had a brain aneurysm and she lost her memory. Oh, this is gonna sound incredible, but it's true. She lost her memory and I uh, saw her in the car. I was picking up my daughter, um, third grade, and she was ahead of me. And I can see her in the mirror looking back at me. And I'm looking like, is that Wendy? Is that Wendy? And she gets out and she walks over to me. She goes, you have a problem? You keep looking right at me. Do I know you? Do you know me? I go, Wendy Jarnatowski. I, yeah, I know you. You haven't changed a bit. And she goes, I'm not really remembering you. So I gave a bunch of names. She goes, ah, Alan, oh my God, I used to go to her house. Hang out with her. I picked up her little brother. I used to hang out with her little brother. And she goes, let me explain. I had a brain aneurysm. I don't remember everything. So every once in a while, she had, for, for a couple of years, she had these fade outs where she'd forget everything. And her mom would contact me, pick her up. So I'd pick her up and I, I, one place always worked. I'd take her to Puffy Taco in La Mirada. They used to be in La Harbor also. We used to go there at lunch and take her to Puffy Taco and talk to her and she'd remember and bring her. It's like 50 first dates, totally. When that movie came out, I'm like, oh, it's like Wendy. But uh, it's totally like that. And then I find this baseball and I'm thinking, full circle again right here. <laughs> There's a girl who lives up the block. Back in school, she could turn all the guys' heads. Sometimes on a Friday, I'll stop by and have a few drinks. After she put her kids to bed, her and her husband, Bobby, they split up. I guess it's 15 years gone by now. She says when she feels like crying, she starts thinking about the old times. Or she says when she feels like crying, she starts thinking about glory days. Yeah, they'll pass you by. I had a friend could throw that speed ball by you. Make you look like a fool, boy. <laughs> Everything happens for a reason. I found this. <laughs> sure is funny life. <laughs> it's filled with magic like that. You just gotta catch it. I had a friend who was a big baseball player back in high school. He could throw that speed ball by you. Make you look like a fool boy. Saw me the other day at this roadside bar. I was walking in. He was walking out. We went back inside, sat down, and had a few drinks. But all we kept talking about glory days. And yeah, they'll pass you by glory days. These kids are in their glory days right now. 